In the ever-evolving realm of digital photography, the capabilities of image editing tools such as Lightroom, Photoshop, have really reshaped the dynamics of capturing and showcasing images. And when speaking with most photographers, they will tell you that the basis of editing comes from the exposure, contrast, tone curve, HSL, and effects sliders in the global menu. However, the use of global editing sliders really poses a bit of a challenge. It limits the photographer's ability to achieve specific and precise edits on certain parts of their photo. In this video, I will delve into the art of using masks and show you a couple of the ways that I use masks on almost every one of my photos. So what are masks? Masks are like selective filters and overlays you can use to edit certain parts of your photo with leaving the rest of your photo unaffected. For example, this is an image that I took on my trip down to the Redwood Forest in California. This is Trillium Falls, a very beautiful about 10 foot waterfall. Um, just a short little hike as well. And as you can see, here is the raw file for that photo. And I just used the global editing sliders and edit it like this. I would maybe bring the clarity down just a bit, maybe a bit of the texture as well. It is a bit harsh for my liking. But this is the problem with just sticking to global editing sliders. The photo looks a little flat. In real life, it felt like there was depth to this waterfall. And in the photo, it really doesn't portray that. So here's a couple of ways that we can fix that. So one of my favorite tricks actually involves making the sunlight in your photo pop a little bit more. Sometimes cameras have a tough time portraying that atmospheric glow that the sun gives off in real life. And to achieve that, we just add a radial gradient and make a big radial gradient up where the sun would be for, for this photo. It's even better if the sun's in the back of your photo because the viewer's eye is always gonna gravitate towards the brightest part of your photo. So if you have a foreground element leading up to the brightest part of your photo, that is perfect. So we just make a big radial gradient where the sun was coming in, maybe feather it just a little bit. And then we'll go down and we are going to add a bit of negative dehaze. So this is going to, and I'll exaggerate it a little bit here, let me put it, I'll exaggerate it a little bit if we do all the way. So if you could see what it's doing, it's really doing what the slider is saying. Instead of taking away haze, if you were to use positive dehaze, it is adding that atmospheric uh, glow that the sun would normally give off. So obviously we don't wanna go that extreme. We'll go to about maybe 15 or 20, usually between 15 or 20 does it pretty well. Here's the before and the after. And then what we're also gonna do is that since the sun is a warmer color most of the time and it usually comes off as a warmer color, we're gonna add a bit of temperature and also negative contrast. So it doesn't look like we actually did much to this photo when you look at it like that. However, if we take this away, that is before, that is after. That is just such a big difference and I might even go back and add a little bit more dehaze and a bit less contrast as well. And then here is the before and here is the after. And this is the before and the after. It just adds, this really just adds that extra layer of depth to your photo, especially when you want the sunlight to really shine. Sticking with this photo, another way that I really like to use a, the radial gradient tool and using masks to help um, add to the atmosphere of my photo is to capture the waterfall spray. So similar to how your camera can't capture the sun's glow, it also has a tough time sometimes capturing that mist that waterfalls can give off when they're really flowing. So if you put a radial gradient on the tops and bottoms of your waterfalls, and then just subtract a bit of dehaze. It'll again create that little glow, almost atmospheric glow that waterfalls usually get off, give off in person, but sometimes the camera has a tough time doing that. So it just gives that extra little bit of depth again to your photo. And I usually like to add it to almost, see with this multi-layered fall, I usually like to add it to almost every one of these little, um, offshoots here just because that's kind of how I pictured it in person. So if we do a before and after of all the masks, here is before and after. 
Here is before and after. And already you can see what a big difference just these two simple masks have made when looking at the depth of the photo. So moving on to this next photo, as you can see, this is a photo from my recent trip to Kauai and it is of the Nepali coast. It's just absolutely gorgeous. But the problem I have with this photo, although here is the raw file and here is the simple edit that I did put on here, I'm having a tough time seeing that depth that I really felt in person. So one thing that you can do, and this is also able to be done in Photoshop, but I really like doing it in Lightroom, it's actually pretty simple, is what you're gonna do is that you're going to use the brush tool and you're going to paint over the dark parts of your image. So basically the shadowy parts of your image, just like that, we'll go through and we'll just do some simple. It doesn't have to be super, super precise for now. You can always go back and adjust and subtract, but we will go through and add some the brush here. All these little crevices and all these little shadowy parts of my image, I'm just going to fill in with the brush. And then what I can do is that I can take down the exposure of these and it's just gonna make those shadows so much more dramatic than they were before. So even just going down uh, to negative 20 there, you can see how much of a difference that made. And going back and forth between the before and after, maybe I'll take it down, that's a little dramatic. And even just doing that, it's just such a huge difference. And to make this effect even more dramatic, we're going to dodge or brighten up the highlights. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna take that brush tool again and just brush over the brightest parts of your image here. And so basically, um, this is the dodging and burning technique that I'm sure you've heard of. And it's just basically brightening up the brightest parts of your image, the highlights, and darkening down those shadows to really create that depth. I'm just going to brighten up those highlights just a little bit, not too, too much, not, a, not too little. And then I'm also gonna bring the temperature up just a little bit to kind of exaggerate that sun glow on the peaks as well. So maybe that's a little bit much. That looks pretty good. And so if we just take a look at before and after of just those masks, you can really see that the before, it has depth, but it also seems just a little flat. And then when we add those shadows and those highlights, it just really, really um, dramatizes those shadows and those highlights, making it feel like those shadows are darker because we did darken those down. And making the highlights even brighter just brings that extra layer of depth to the photo. So that is another way that I like to um, use masks in Lightroom. So another mask that I do on almost every one of my photos, and it doesn't matter if it's a super intimate scene or a giant landscape scene, is to add a vignette. And although Lightroom's post-crop vignetting does a pretty decent job, being able to create your own custom vignette with an inverted radial gradient just gives you that extra layer of control that you would like to have with your photo. So let's go over to, I'll give you two examples for this. So for this one, I'm just gonna create a radial gradient and I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna make it pretty big and then I'm gonna feather it in just a little bit and then I'm going to invert it so that it's just the corners and it's just very simple like that where you can control how much of the image you actually want to be vignetted. So if you take a look, this really just makes your eye go towards the center of the photo and it keeps your eye almost trapped into that center of the photo. It keeps you looking at the image longer. And if you, if you look up at the top left to see what that really did at the preview menu, it'll be easier to see there. So there is the before and then there is with the vignette. It really just makes it way more dramatic and it really keeps your eye at the photo longer. But what you can do is that, say that's a little bit too much for your liking, you can customize this radial gradient by just making it a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. 
So another big advantage of creating your own custom vignette with the radial gradient is one, making it bigger or smaller, but also the ability to move it around. So you don't have to keep it in the center of your photo. Say you want this peak right here to be more of the focus. You move that radial gradient down and then this area up here is much darker than this area here. So if we just take a look at the before and the after of this whole photo, you can see just how, more, how much more dramatic this really makes it. And then I also like to do in most of my photos is take a linear gradient and just take it from the top here. Again, to keep your eye into the middle of the photo, maybe a little bit less, and then take that down the exposure down just a bit just to add to that vignette a little bit and you can just see that there's just so much more depth and you can just tell that this photo is just so much more dramatic than what we started off with so this is with no masks here I'll fit it to the screen here so this is with no masks and this is with just those simple three simple masks that we applied to it so we did the dodging and burning and then we did a custom vignette another way that i like to use the custom vignette this is a, another photo from my trip to Kauai. this is ho'opi falls and if we just create a custom a radial gradient and we zoom that out just a little bit kind of want this one in the center but one of the main parts of this photo is that sun glow in the back so if we invert that and then we take the exposure down you're going to see that it's going to darken down parts of the image that we don't want however when using your own radial gradient you can use the brush tool and subtract the areas that you don't want to be affected by the vignette so here I didn't want the sun to be affected by the vignette, so I'm gonna just erase that part. And now if we take a look at the before and the after of this, all of this is darkened around the flower and into the trees, but the sunlight is not affected at all by the mass. So one last way that I like to use mass, if we go back to this photo as well, is to target the specific colors so if you do so if you go up to the plus icon and go to color range say you wanted to select this green but you don't want all of that green you just want the green behind the flower maybe i want to change it to a little bit more yellow tone instead of the green so here you can adjust the refinement to get all the greens that you wanted but then the ability to stack the masks really gives you that extra layer so if we right click on the mask and go intersect mask width and then linear gradient then we drag the linear gradient from the bottom here say we drag it up so now the mask is only gonna affect what's in the radial gradient or sorry the linear gradient so as you can see now it's just affecting the greens behind the flower. This is a really powerful tool now. So now we can change the effects of just the colors we wanted. So maybe I wanted to bring up the contrast a bit on these, maybe brighten up the exposure just a little bit. And as you can see, it is just, it is just affecting those greens that are behind the flower. So maybe I bring those up just a little bit and maybe I'll bring the saturation down a little bit as well. So it kind of matches the, color in the background so being able to affect only certain colors even more customizable than the HSL sliders is one of the biggest tools that I use as well when editing my photos so I hope you all enjoyed I hope you learned something from this video but thank you all for watching don't forget to like subscribe and share with your friends I'll see you in the next one